Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today's video is going to be a Calgary Zoo doll video. Um, so I'm going to go through the whole process of how I made the King Penguin Chick. So it's, this is another doll down. This is really good. I'm really uh, happy with the way it turned out. I've never made a penguin before, so it was something a little bit different. So the body structure is totally different from anything that I've made before. I've made birds before, but not penguins, and penguins just a little bit different. And um, I'll probably end up making more penguins because it's um, the body is fairly simple to make. I have a pattern that I can use, um, even though I don't want to make penguins this big. But you know, I could make um, life-size penguins of smaller things, small penguins. So penguins like. Um, <clears throat> The fairy penguins we have here in Australia, um, they'll be pretty cool because they're only really little penguins, so it'll probably be smaller than this doll, actually. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm going to go through the whole process of how I made this doll. Really happy with the way it turned out, happy, really happy with the way the, the face is. Um, it's like a little grumpy, grumpy penguin chick. Um, but yeah. So another one down for the Calgary Zoo. Uh, if you want to know how I made it, then uh, keep watching. All right, so if you haven't already seen my sculpting video, this is what I sculpted previously. The sculpting video is up on my channel. I'll try and remember to link it in the description box, but I never remember that. <laughs> uh, so basically a little look around the uh, King Penguin Chick head. So it's sculpted out of Sculpey Original. Um, and it also has glass eyes in it, which I have created myself. Uh, there's a little snippet of some of the bits that you can find in my sculpting video. So I go through the whole process of sculpting the King Penguin Chick. I have a sculpting video coming up of the feet as well. So um, that'll be up in the next video on Sunday. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But once that uh, those pieces are, have been sculpted and baked in the oven, so they're ready to paint. So I basically prime my pieces before I paint anything so I use a canvas primer by the brand Derivian Matisse. I find it works really really well um, to adhere the paint to slippery surfaces because resin can be quite slippery and so can polymer clay uh, but just always test um, all of the material that you're using on whatever you're painting on just in case there's a weird reaction to anything that you're painting with. So I'm using a uh, paint again by Derivian Matisse it's just a black paint with with like a red base to it um, and it gives it a sort of a brown tone to it which um, I didn't want a jet black tone or a blue tone jet blue black tone <laughs> um, so I thought this paint works really well it's quite a lot thicker than uh, some of the other paints that I use it is still a water-based acrylic paint I haven't had a problem with it um, uh, on all polymer clay pieces but with my resin pieces I think it was the resin that was the problem uh, it was not curing on it but I think the resin was leaching some chemicals from it so uh, yeah like I said always test your pieces before you paint or and all of your uh, paint or anything that you apply to bits just test out before to see how it reacts so I applied uh, the paint to that uh, let it to dry overnight or for at least for a couple of hours and I can move on to painting the feet so like I said the feet sculpting video will be up next in uh, on Sunday and I go through the process of sculpting these feet but you can get a little look around at what they look like um, they've got the ball and socket armature already placed inside of it and all it needs is some primer and then some paint so for the paints that I'm using um, using the gray paint is by the brand chromacryl it's a lot um, runnier than the Derivian Matisse paint that I've used uh, but I really like this paint it's got a good pigment uh, to it and it's really really inexpensive but it is also made in Australia so I don't know how highly accessible it is over in the States or in Europe or something like that. Um, but you, you'll be able to find something comparable in your local craft stores. Uh, so I'm basically doing a couple of different techniques here for the painting. I wasn't sure which one I was going to go with. So I basically painted a base color, which was the gray. So if you have a look at penguin feet, they're sort of a gray color, um, a, a gray undertone and um, the black over the top so I painted it in a nice neutral gray undertone and then I did a couple of little tests to see uh, what painting technique I'd prefer so I did a dry brush technique and I did a watered down technique as well so um, I can show you little bits and pieces in this video of um, the techniques that I tried
Now firstly, I wanted to paint the nail area in a black to begin with. I'm using a bigger brush because I'm going to use the brush to um, do the rest of the foot anyway. Um, but I just wanted to do the, um, the nails first and um, get them covered. And I'm, again, I'm using a uh, just a plain black one by Chromacryl. I'm not using the Derivian Matisse one. Um, so this is just either a blue toned colored uh, black, um, which I thought worked well for the nails. <laughs> Alright, so I'm trying the watered down technique to apply all of the black but and wiping off the excess, but essentially I didn't like the way it looked. It sort of reversed what I was going for. Um, so all of that black colouring was going into all of the crevices and I wanted it the other way around. So what I did was do a dry brush technique on the second one and I was pretty happy with the way that turned out. So basically you just add a tiny little bit of um, paint to your brush and then uh, just go over the top of your sculpture and essentially it won't paint the indentations of your sculpt and it will paint the outside but if you want a video on dry brushing um, let me know and I can make one um, and yeah hopefully it would help you on the way or any other painting techniques let me know in the comments and um, yeah I can make a video on all of those techniques so yeah I just go over it a couple of times to uh, come up with a uh, paint job that I'm relatively happy with always looking at my reference photos as well that I have on my computer moving on to the faux fur so I'm using this notorious faux fur that I used for the Lima dolls uh, for the Calgary Zoo as well but it's um it's a really great fabric that sort of looks like a um, penguin chick feathered uh, body uh, so it was important for them to get a uh, faux fur that looked like feathers so I thought this one would work really really well and the color is um, pretty close to what penguin chicks are so I thought this would work really well but this type of faux fur is really difficult to work with just because of the nature of the way it's put together the backing is kind of silky and um, it is like a woven fabric rather than a glue sort of back a backing um, so there's it's really really soft so there's no glue on the backing of this it's just all woven um, so therefore the silky texture makes it a little bit difficult to cut and also makes the pile really difficult to work with as well um, so if you do get this type of faux fur um, definitely play around with it and see how it behaves and how it works but essentially it's really good for certain things and it's really really soft it's the softest faux fur I've ever felt in my life um, but yeah so it works great for king penguin feathers so I found these small little scissors work really well for cutting out this particular fabric I use these scissors for cutting out all my fabrics but these particular ones cut out this fabric really well um, I've tried the blade it doesn't really work for this fabric it sort of just stretches it so I wouldn't recommend using a blade for this type of fabric or any fabric for that matter because I find it just damages the pile and damages the backing so um, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend a small pair of sharp scissors. Um, I find big ones sort of cut the pile, you don't have much control of it so um, yeah I recommend smaller ones. So once everything is cut out I might just say that body pattern I think I'm going to do that as my printable this month over on my Patreon so if you want the King Penguin body pattern um, I'm pretty sure 99% sure that's going to be the printable for um, January over on my Patreon. Um, yes moving on to sewing so I use a sewing machine to sew up most of my dolls not all of them uh, some of them I do uh, hand sewing but for this, this particular one as the body was really really simple I decided to sew it all up with a sewing machine leaving the legs open and also the head area uh, you want to leave a area that's big enough to flip the fabric th the right way around um, and yeah it doesn't damage the fur if you're having trouble poking some through I'd recommend a blunt tool like a blunt plastic tool or a blunt wooden tool uh, with a rounded edge so you don't pierce through um, the actual fabric it works really well when you're having trouble I also recommend needle nose pliers to help pull it through it doesn't really damage the fur so uh, just be really careful when you're doing that um, the beauty of this fur because it's so silky it sort of just slips on itself really really easily um, so silkier the fabric the easier it is to flip around um, and as these little legs were a little small to get through I just use that little tool to poke the legs through and it was fine. 
So this is what it looks like once it's been flipped through. You can see how it's taken the shape of a penguin. Um, it's really simple body. I'm going to be adding the wings um, once all of the armature inside, but you can get the idea of what it will look like. Uh, the zoo wanted it to be roughly 50 centimeters tall, so I had to keep that in mind and um, make the pattern accordingly. So once the armature's in, uh, it is ball and socket armature. I have armature videos over on my Patreon if you want to know how I create create all of those ball and socket armatures. They're over on my Patreon. Um, but essentially, once I have um, made the armature I can start attaching all of the pieces and also sewing the wing area on to to the body um, I just ended up poking a little hole through the side of the body to allow the armature to come out and so I could sew the wing on so there wasn't a whole heap of cutting and uh, pattern making for this particular doll so the, the glue that I'm using to attach the faux fur to the to the um, to the polymer clay is a tacky fabric glue it's from a local store here called spotlight it's nothing special you'll be able to find something um, a fabric glue in your local craft store as well but I find this one works really really well um, it adheres pretty quickly um, it's not too stinky either and um, it's really easy to get off things but it adheres the fabric to whatever you're sticking it on really well <laughs> um, and the next step was to refine and create a tail area so I made a little piece in um, roughly a tail form and I sewed the end bit together to give it a little flick and then I'm going to be sewing it around the back side of the um, penguin doll and that way when you look at a reference picture you'll see penguins have like a little um, tail flick so I wanted to, ach to achieve that so I created and sewed on um, the piece piece like this and I didn't need to do any cutting I just sort of integrated it with my lattice stitch um, onto the back of the doll I, I find it works really well and I think you really need to cut out pieces as well so you can see how a little bit more definition it's made and I also gave one wing a trim you can see how much of a difference uh, it has made with a slight trim on the wing it looks more like a wing <laughs> and then uh, applied some faux fur to the head uh, once I've done that, I can refine all of the areas with some paint again. So I use a combination of fabric paints um, and also acrylic paints as well, depending on which bit I'm painting. But it really uh, finishes the doll off when you're adding little details with paint. So I really highly recommend getting used to things like that. Uh, again, if you want a video on um, refining your pieces with paint, let me know. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments and uh, I can also make a video on that. Um, but yeah, it's really important to get um, the character back once you've applied the faux fur with uh, some shading and some paint. It really finishes off the doll. So that's pretty much it for uh, the making of the penguin chick. Like I said, the um, video of the feet will be up on Sunday. A uh, little look at the doll here. I uh, really enjoyed making a penguin. I really want to make smaller ones in the future, like fairy penguins and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. I appreciate it. You can check out my Patreon. Link is in the description, Instagram, Facebook, Creatures of Nat, and also my shop, creaturesofnat.com. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!